In this video, we're going to take a look at some translations, which is a type of transformation. So transformations broadly just means changing a shape or a point in a certain way. And the word translation is a math word that just means to move it. So we are going to be moving objects in this lesson um, and we are going to be moving it uh, horizontally and vertically. Now, have a look here at this example. Okay, and I've just drawn in the blue box. You can see that the shape, the little flag has moved to the right and it has moved up. Now, we define it by thinking about movement in terms of those coordinate points or maybe how many spaces they move. So we can see this flag has moved. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, okay, to the right. So six to the right, and then it has moved one, two, up, two up. And every point has moved like this. If we think of the top of the flag, that's also moved six to the right and two up to get to there. So we can see something's going on with this six and this two, and we say this is a translation where we have a movement to the right of six and a movement up of two. So we define it with this thing called a column vector. And the top number means a movement left and right, so horizontal. And the lower number means a movement up and down, like vertical. Now, to the right is a positive direction. So six is a positive number. But if it moves six to the left, I would be using a negative six. Or if I moved down, I'd be using a minus two rather than a two. So that's kind of how this is going to be working. OK, so let's just take a look at a nice example here. It says the diagram below shows the shapes A, B, C and D. And along what vector would you translate D to A? So we're going to just focus on a couple of these. D to A. So let's just pick any particular point and let's have this one here, perhaps. And we can see in A, we've got it over here. So what we've got to do is we've got to count how far to the right it goes and how far up it goes. And that's going to give us our solution for the description of this uh, column vector. OK, so let's count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've gone ten to the right. One, two, three up. So it's going to be 10, 3. There is our movement from D to A. OK, what about then? Let's do another one. How about then from A to C? From A to C. OK, well, let's just pick a point in A. Let's just pick that point there and a corresponding point in C. So we're doing this one. OK, let's count. So moving to the left this time, 1, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're going to have minus eleven here because we went left rather than right. So we're moving in a negative direction. That horizontal vector component is going to be negative. And then we're going to go down. So let's count down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's 11 down. And remember, up is a positive direction. Down is a negative direction. So we're going to write negative 11 there. OK, right. So we've got this understood, hopefully, to some extent. What about then? Let's do from A to B. Let's finish it off. Look, OK, let's do part C here and do from A to B. So I will just choose and I could choose any, but let's just choose that point there. So moving from A to B, let's count across first. One, two, three, four, five. That point has moved. So we're going to have a positive five because it moves right. And then counting down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to have a minus because we're going down, not up. And it's ten places. It's minus ten. That's moving with a translation of five minus ten. OK, hopefully this has helped you to understand what a translation is. And it's just a movement and we can define that movement using this thing called a column vector. OK, I hope that's enough. I'm sure you can do the question.